Hey everyone, it's Mr. Robinson, and the Oscars have been announced today, or yesterday, whenever this video comes up. Probably today. But I'm here to talk about them, give my thoughts on what got nominated, whether I agree with them or not. But before we do that, let's put in a little bonus and talk about the Razzies. The Razzies came out the day before the Oscar nominations came out, so let's see. I have the Wikipedia page up. Let's see what got nominated. For worst screenplay, we have After Earth, Grown Ups 2, The Lone Ranger, Medea Christmas, and Movie 43. Okay, um, I want After Earth to win because I didn't even know Grown Ups had to had a screenplay. In fact, there were stories that I believe it didn't even have one, which I wouldn't doubt it. And um, Movie 43 is just a bunch of... Oh, okay, I hate my movie 43, but After Earth was just filled with so many stupid plot decisions, horrendous dialogue, that yeah, I just wanted to win, because I don't want M. Night to make another movie again. Okay, worst director, we got Dennis Dugan for Grown Ups 2, Tyler Perry for Medea Christmas, and Temptation, Confessions of a Marriage Counselor, M. Night Shyamalan for After Earth, Thir 15 people from Movie 43, including Elizabeth Banks, Stephen Brill, Steve Carr, Rusty Cundiff, James Duffy, Griffin Dune, Peter Farley, Patrick Forsberg, William, Will Graham, James Gunn, and he's supposed to direct Guardians of the Galaxy, or he has he's directing Guardians of the Galaxy for this August, that's sad. Um, Bob Ordenkirk. And Brett Ratner, no surprise there. Oh, and Jonathan Van Tuchen, that's all for Movie 43. And then for Lone Ranger, Gore Verbinski, which... You know, it's so sad that after Rango, after he won the Oscar for Best Animated Feature for Rango, Gore Verbinski has to do Lone Ranger. Which, I'm going to give Gore Verbinski a pass, because that movie had so much development hell behind it. That... Know, I'm picking M. Night Shyamalan, because... If he could not deliver a financially or critically successful movie without his name on, then, yeah. Razzie for him. Uh, worst prequel, re mm, pre worst prequel, remake, ripoff, or sequel? That's a mouthful. I'm trying to say that three times fast. Okay, we got Grown Ups 2, The Hangover Part 3, Lone Ranger, remake of past Lone Rangers, and a ripoff of Wild Wild West. Ooh. That's, that, them fighting words. That's, wow. Um, Scary Movie 5 and The Smurfs 2. I'm going to go with The Hangover Part 3, probably because, well, first of all, Grown Ups 2 had no reason to exist at all. No, Nobody wanted a sequel, but yet somehow there was a sequel. But The Hangover Part 3, again, is not necessary, but it's full of people that I know are talented and is just so bad. Uh, worst screen combo, the entire cast of Grown Ups 2, the entire cast of Movie 43, Lindsay Lohan and Charlie Sheen in Scary Movie 5, Tyler, Pal Tyler Perry and either Larry the Cable Guy or that worn out wig and dress in Medea Christmas, and Jaden Smith and Will Smith on Planet Nepotism. <laughs> oh, wow, that, that's pretty good um, in After Earth. If there's one thing I can appreciate the Razzies for is that they have a sense of humor, and that is pretty funny. Um, I will go with the cast of Grown Ups 2. I mean, I've already mentioned that I absolutely despise Movie 43. Not only was it the worst movie of 2013, it's one of the worst movies I've seen in my life. But most of the cast members did a good job of staying apart from others because of the way the movie was shot. Uh, so I'm going to pick Grown Ups 2 because it's a bunch of talentless hacks that are together. It's a day in the life of Adam Sandler and his friends. So, there you go. Worst Supporting Actress. We got Selma Hayek for Grown Ups 2. Katherine Heigl in The Big Wedding. No surprise there. I mean, I didn't see The Big Wedding, but it's Katherine Heigl. Uh, Kim Kardashian in Temptation, Confessions of a Marriage Counselor. Um, it's Kim Kardashian. Of uh, Lady Gaga, Machete Kills, Lindsay Lohan in Inappropriate Comedy, and Scary Movie 5. I am going... Oh, that's a tough one. The only one I really saw was um, Selma Hayek. Uh, 
you know, I want to say I feel sorry for Selma Hayek, but she's been in too fucking many Adam Sandler movies that I, I can't give her a pass anymore. So I'm just going to say Selma Hayek. Like, you need to stop doing Happy Madison productions. So you, sh you I'm picking her for my pick. Um, Worst Supporting Actor, Chris Brown in Battle of the Year, Larry the Cable Guy in A Medea Christmas, Taylor Lautner in Grown Ups 2. <laughs> wow, after Twilight, you'd think he'd try to go after something of a little more quality. Will Smith in After Earth, Nick Swartzen in Grown Ups 2, and A Haunted House. Mm, I want to say Taylor Lautner. I'm, I don't want to pick Will Smith because... I think it's M. Night Shyamalan's fault for him having no charisma throughout the entire movie, when usually in shit he has charisma. Uh, I'm going to say... I'm just going to pick Tyler Perry. I'm just going to pick Taylor Lautner, because even though it ended two years ago, I'm still on that Twilight hate wagon. Okay, worst actress. Almost there. Uh, Halle Berry in The Call in Movie 43. Selena Gomez in The Getaway. Lindsay Lohan in The Canyons. I didn't even know she was in three movies this year, last year. Uh, Tyler Perry in A Medea Christmas. <laughs> and Naomi Watts in Diana. Uh, and Movie 43. Uh, this one I have no opinion on. I mean, I for Naomi Watts and Halle Berry, they were both in Movie 43. But, for most of the actors, like, some of them knew they were in shit. In fact, I would say most of them were in shit. Most of them knew they were in shit, I'm sorry. But, I got the impression that they were trying their damnedest to make it as funny as possible. And, it was just more blame on the script and just the fact that it was a shitty movie. But, you know what, I'm gonna pick Halle Berry because one thing I admired Halle Berry for is that when she won the Razzie for Catwoman, she showed up to collect her Razzie in person. So I would like her to win just to see if she goes there and wins again because she has a good sense of humor when it comes to the Razzies. Like, I'd like to thank my agent for booking me this piece of shit. And that was for Catwoman, so. But yeah, I do feel sorry for Halle Berry in terms of like her being in movie 43, but I'd like her to win just because it would be funny if she would actually show up. Oh, uh, okay, moving on. Worst actor. Johnny Depp in The Lone Ranger. Ashton Kutcher in Jobs. Adam Sandler in Grown Ups 2. Jaden Smith in After Earth. Sylvester Stallone in Bullet to the Head, Escape Plan, and Grudge Match. Which, I mean, once Stallone started getting work again, or I mean a lot of work, it was only a matter of time before they would actually give him, give him more Razzie attention. I'm going to say Jaden Smith, because... He tried to carry that entire movie after Earth, and it was just boring. <clears throat> it frustrated me. He's such a shitty actor, and I just don't like him. But Johnny Depp, as much as I don't like Johnny Depp playing an Indian, or as much as I don't like Ashton Kutcher in Jobs, Jaden Smith was worse. I'm picking Jaden Smith. Um, okay, last one. Worst picture. We got After Earth, Grown Ups 2, Lone Ranger, Medea Christmas, and the movie that I want to win, Movie 43. I, I don't need to explain myself. Just, just find that video of me grabbing a pillow and screaming. Uh, that will sum up my opinion on Movie 43. But let's move on. Let's end on a positive note. Let's go to the Academy Awards. And let's see how disappointing the nominations will be this year. Again, I'm working down from the bottom, working my way to the top. Okay, best visual effects. We got Gravity, The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug, Iron Man 3, The Lone Ranger, no, no, okay, moving on, um, and Star Trek Into Darkness, with no Pacific Rim anywhere to be found. The effects in Lone Ranger were not that good. Like, the effects in Pacific Rim were so detailed that it's just unbelievable. And you decide to pick Lone Ranger instead? You, Acad- I, I, I won't understand you, Academy voters. But, with that said, I'm picking Gravity. Because, I mean, 
if Pacific Rim were on the list, I would have picked Pacific Rim, but I'm picking Gravity, because those effects were just so, so good. Film editing, 12 Years a Slave, American Hustle, Captain Phillips, Dallas Buyers Club, Gravity. Mm, I'm going to pick Gravity again, because the editing made the movie move at a good pace, it was never boring, and it helped with the tense moments. Like, just, you're on the edge of your seat throughout the movie, and the way it's edited again from the regular shots to the POV shots from Sandra Bullock, it's pretty incredible. So my money's on gravity again. Best costume design. 12 Years a Slave, American Hustle, The Grandmaster, Great Gatsby, and The Invisible Woman. This is a tough one. I am going to pick... Oh, man. I'm stuck between American Hustle and The Great Gatsby because both movies, in terms of their costumes, did a fantastic job utilizing that era they took place. Um, I'm... Okay, as much as I wasn't a fan of The Great Gatsby... Um, I'm going to pick Great Gatsby, because I think Great Gatsby had a much better stylized look than American Hustle did. And so, yeah, Great Gatsby for me. Best makeup and hairstyling. Got Dallas Buyers Club, which I will try to get around once, the closer we get to the awards, at least before the Oscars air. Uh, Jackass Presents Bad Grandpa. Wow. Um, good for the Jackass crew to get an Oscar nomination. And the Lone Ranger. You don't even admire Pacific Rim for anything, and yet you nominate Lone Ranger for two Oscars. Now, I'm tempted to say I want the Lone Ranger to win Worst Picture just because of this atrocity, but I will stick with Movie 43, but for makeup and hairstyling, I can't really say. Mm, 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 mm. I have no comment. I have no comment. Um, okay, cinematography. We got The Great Gatsby, Gravity, Inside Lewin Davis, Nebraska, and Prisoner. Um, um, I haven't seen Prisoners, but um, Roger Deakins, who is the Coen Brothers' usual cinematographer, who, or who did cinematography for True Grit and the last James Bond movie, Skyfall, um, I'd like him to win because his cinematography in a lot of his movies are so, is such beauty. It's so gorgeous to look at that I would pick Roger Deakins for Prisoners, but, um, I don't know, Gravity, great, in, Gravity Inside Lewin Davis and the great, the Grandmaster, I'm sorry, uh, were just really good, so, uh, I'm going to, I'm not going to cheat and just pick a movie that I haven't seen, so I'm going to be honest with myself and say The Grandmaster. Best production design. We got 12 Years a Slave, American Hustle, Gravity, The Great Gatsby, and Her. I'm picking Her because I love the futuristic uh, semi-sci-fi look to the movie. Uh, the rest of the movie had good, the rest of the nominees had good production design, but her was a little more unique, I thought. Okay, now what? Okay, we got sound mixing. Captain Phillips, Gravity, The Hobbit, Inside Boone Davis, and Lone Survivor. I, not that much of an expert when it comes to sound editing or sound mixing, so, I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna say Gravity. Uh, best Sound Editing, All is Lost, Captain Phillips, Gravity, The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug, and The Lone Survivor. Uh, again, I'm going to pick Gravity. Okay, here's here are two categories that I know I can point out. Um, best Original Song, Alone Yet Not Alone, from Alone Yet Not Alone. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Oh, no, I'm not done reading. Um, Happy, from Despicable Me 2. Not good for them. Let It Go from Frozen, rightfully so. Uh, the Moon Song from Her. I don't even remember. There, I don't even remember there being an original song to begin with. Um, 
And then Ordinary Love from Mandela, Long Walk to Freedom, which was the movie that won the, Os the Golden Globe, I'm sorry, for best song over Let It Go. I've made my point of Let It Go winning best original song for the Oscars. I'm going to stay on that point. Best original score, we got John Williams for The Book Thief. Well, I mean, he's John Williams. Stephen Price for Gravity. William Butler and Owen Pallett for Her. Alexandra Desplat for Philomena. And Thomas Newman for Saving Mr. Banks. I mean, I mean, I love the scores for Gravity and Her, but I think between the two, I'm going to pick Her because I already complained in my review about iTunes not having the score on iTunes, so I'm picking Her for Best Original Score. Hopefully that will motivate iTunes to release that score. If, if the nomination, although the nominee is coming out, should have been influenced enough, so get, get to it, iTunes. Best Animated Short Film. We have... Feral. Not sure what that was. Get a Horse. Oh, okay. Get a Horse was, if I'm correct, it's the short that played in front of Frozen. Yes, it is. Um, Mr. Hublot, Possessions, and Room on the Broom. Um, I've only seen Get a Horse, so Get a Horse is going to be my pick. Um, best Live Action Short Film. Um, okay. Most of these have foreign names, so I'm just going to say they're English names. That wasn't me. Just before losing everything, Helium, Do I Have to Take Care of Everything, and The Vorman Problem. No comment. I haven't seen any of these shorts. Best Documentary Short. Cave Digger. Facing Fear. Karma Has No Walls. The Lady in Number Six. Music Saved My Life. And Prison Terminal. The Last Days of Private Jack Hall. Again, I haven't seen any of these documentary shorts, so no comment. <clears throat> Best Documentary Feature. The Act of Killing, Cutie and the Boxer, Dirty Wars, The Square, and 20 Feet from Stardom. No comment, although there is one documentary in particular that did not get nominated, Blackfish. And I couldn't be more happy that Blackfish did not get nominated. I will get into why in another video. I can't guarantee when, but it'll be before the award ceremony. Best foreign language film, moving on. Um, the Broken Circle Breakdown, The Missing Picture, The Hunt, The Great Beauty, and Omar. I haven't seen any of these, so no comment. Best animated feature, finally, something I can give a comment on. Uh, the Croods, never saw The Croods, but I heard good things about it. Despicable Me 2. Good for them. Ernest and Chalstein. Gotta have one anime feature on there that nobody's ever heard of. Or at least that I haven't heard of. Oh, okay, I'm looking at it right now. And I do recognize the art style, but I've never seen it. Um, the, the Frozen. That's when I want to win. And Hayao Miyazaki's The Wind Rises. Which I actually did see. I saw that. So look for a review to come out possibly this next weekend. So, I'll give my review for The Wind Rises this next weekend, so you can hear what I have to say about the movie. Um, okay, Best Adapted Screenplay. We got Twelve Years a Slave, Before Midnight, Captain Phillips, Philomena, and The Wolf of Wall Street. Hmm. This, okay, Captain Phillips, um... The writing was really good. It made some for some intense moments. But The Wolf of Wall Street, I thought was really funny and had really great dialogue. So, mmm. <sighs> 12 Years a Slave was... Um, I'm going to pick Wolf of Wall Street because I seem to enjoy the dialogue. And I got more enjoyment out of that script more than I did the other movies, honestly. Okay, best original screenplay. American Hustle, Blue Jasmine, Dallas Buyers Club, Her, and Nebraska. No question about it. I want Her to win the, that Oscar. But, <clears throat> because, I mean, as much as I like American Hustle, I think it has some good dialogue. I like American Hustle more in the acting and production design stylistic standpoint. Because, I'll be honest right now, with you right now, American Hustle 
plot-wise is a bit confusing for me to follow, but I still like the movie, and that's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with her for best original screenplay. Okay, now for best supporting actress. I have Sally Hawkins for Blue Jasmine, Jennifer Lawrence for American Hustle, Lupta Ngongo, I don't know how to pronounce your name, I'm sorry, for 12 Years a Slave, Julie Roberts for August Osage County, and June Squibb for Nebraska. Hmm. I've seen all these performances. They're all really good. Um, you know what? I actually have no, no opinion. I'll be satisfied if any of them win, although I have a feeling Jennifer Lawrence is gonna win. Which, hey, no problems for me. I love Jennifer Lawrence. Um, <clears throat> okay, Best Supporting Actor. Barkhad Abi in Captain Phillips. He's the main leader of those pirates. So good for him. Bradley Cooper for American Hustle. Good for him. Michael Fassbender for 12 Years a Slave, which, yes, um, that was a scary performance. Jonah Hill for The Wolf of Wall Street. Good for him. I mean, he was a little over the top and turned into very much Jonah Hill-esque, but still good in the movie. And Jared Leto in Dallas Buyers Club. Um, I'm going to say Michael Fassbender. That is a performance that is... You hate Michael Fassbender in that movie. And he was so good in that movie that I think he really should win, especially after he got snubbed for Shame back in 2011. Although, if I had one complaint about that category... Um, hang on. I have one complaint about the Best Supporting Actor category. Why isn't Daniel Brühl from... I don't know how to pronounce the last name, but why is Daniel Brühl from Rush not nominated? Why? In fact, why hasn't Rush gotten any attention so far? Huh? <clears throat> That's... I don't know. Rush was so good. Why didn't the Oscar give any attention? I mean, that is a Oscar-type movie. And so far, it's not getting any notice at all. <coughs> Moving on. Almost done. Okay, Best Actress. We've got Amy Adams for American Hustle, Kate Blanchett for Blue Jasmine, Sandra Bullock for Gravity, Judi Dench in Philomena, and the biggest surprise of the whole category, Meryl Streep in Osage County, or August Osage County. Sarcasm. Yeah. Um, no surprise that Meryl Streep was going to get nominated. Um, but I know at the Golden Globes, in both of the Best Leading Actress categories, the winners were Kate Blanchett and Amy Adams. So, oh man, I'm going to go with Kate Blanchett. As much as I dislike Blue Jasmine. Okay, you know what? I think Kate Blanchett's going to win, but I would... I, I guess just because I love Amy Adams, I like to see her win, so I'm... I'm going to pick Amy Adams. Um, best Actor. Christian Bale, American Hustle. Bruce Dern, Nebraska. Leonardo DiCaprio, The Wolf of Wall Street. Tuenchel Ijafor for 12 Years a Slave, rightfully so. And Matthew McConaughey in Dallas Buyers Club. Wait, where, where's Tom Hanks for Captain Phillips? You didn't nominate Tom Hanks for Best Actor? Oh my, th this is a... That is, that is inexcusable. The last scene in that movie with him and the doctor is incredible. You, he gave one of the best performances in his career next to stuff like Forrest Gump. And you blew it! I mean, if I if I were in charge, I would have cut Christian Bale for Tom Hanks, because Tom Hanks was my shoe in for Best Actor, and he is nowhere to be found. This is as bad as when they snubbed Ben Affleck for Best Director last year for Argo. Oh yeah, I think it's that bad. Okay, let's. But if we want my opinion on what should win, who should win? I want Leonardo DiCaprio to win just because that man has been snubbed so many times that I want him to win the Oscar at last. But 
I think Matthew McConaughey is going to win it. I haven't seen Dallas Buyers Club. I will see it before the ceremonies. But I want Leo to win. But Leo, if you don't win, just keep working. You'll eventually get your well-deserved Oscar. Now the last two. We got Best Director. Alfonso Cuaron, Gravity. Steve McQueen, 12 Years a Slave. Alexander Payne, Nebraska. David O. Russell, American Hustle. And Martin Scorsese, The Wolf of Wall Street. I'm going to go with Ale no, not Alexander Payne. Alfonso Cuaron for Gravity because... That movie had only two actors in the movie, George Clooney and Sandra Bullock, with Sandra Bullock carrying most of the movie. And a lot of the more intense moments of that movie depend on Alfonso Cuaron's direction. So even if Gravity doesn't win Best Picture, I want Alfonso Cuaron to win Best Director. Although I am disappointed that Spike Jones did not get nominated for her. Screwed up Academy, but we're down to the last category, Best Picture. We've got 12 Years a Slave, American Hustle, Captain Phillips, Dallas Buyers Club, Gravity, Her, Nebraska, Philomena, and The Wolf of Wall Street. What I want to win, Her. What I think is going to win, 12 Years a Slave, which, I mean, yeah, I'm in a perfect world I would want Her to win, but if 12 Years a Slave won, then I wouldn't have a problem with that. That movie was made to win Best Picture. And it may not have been one of my 10 favorite movies of the year, but I'm not going to be disappointed if it doesn't win. But no Rush. Rush didn't get a single Oscar nomination. That, that was one of the runners up for my Best of the Year. It didn't make it, but it was definitely, it would definitely be in a top 20 list. I gotta say, this, this batch of Oscar nominations are pretty disappointing. The best way I can describe it, it's like that kid. It's like, the best way I can describe this batch of nominations, it's like when your kid comes back with your report card, with his report card, and he gets mostly C's with a few B's and only one A-. minus. You're not mad at him, but he could have done better. That's the Academy. Don't even give Rush any attention, and you don't nominate Inside Lewin Davis for Best Picture, which I think is much more of Best Picture material than something like American Hustle. I, I like American Hustle, but there, there was nothing outside of Jennifer Lawrence's performance that I found to be Oscar material. So, and there was nine nominees. You could have added a tenth. You could have, Academy. So... I, I can't say I'm satisfied with most of them. Okay, I'm satisfied mo with most of the nominations, but I'm not satisfied with the overall package. But, yeah, those are my thoughts on the Oscar and Razzie nominations. I'm going to wrap this up. Leave a comment. Tell me what you thought of the Oscar and Razzie nominations. You can subscribe to my channel for more stuff in the future. You can check out my other channel, AlexG462. You can follow me on Twitter at AlexG462. Follow me on Instagram at the Real Mr. Robinson, And go like my Facebook page, slash The Cinemas Mr. Robinson. Share me with your friends and tell them about me. And remember to know it before you see it. This has been The Cinemas Mr. Robinson voicing my opinion on the Oscar and Razzie nominations, and I'll see you guys later.